It's good to be home. Before I start, I just wanted to take an opportunity to thank Calvary Hall for everything it's done for me over the years, the Christian brothers, the faculty, my coaches, my mentors. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. Government shut down for 35 days. Walls, DACA, drugs, southern border, national security. These are just a few phrases from headlines this week that all relate to one issue, immigration. Why are thousands of people, primarily women and children from Central America, pouring into our border every week? Well, I think if thousands are appearing on our border, my simple answer is that there's no place left for them to go. While there are many opinions on this issue, I'm here today to present my own particular view, one informed by my work as an attorney and my identity as a Catholic and as a Lasallian. To start, I want to talk about the immigration debate, what it is, and what are the two main voices. And second, I want to present my own voice on this issue, one informed by theology, political philosophy, and Catholic social teaching. And third, I'll conclude my remarks with the question that each of us needs to address if we were ever going to make headway in fixing this problem. First, what is the immigration debate? Two main views. One view is deportation. If you're not here in this country with legal status, then you have to go back. No exceptions. We need walls, barriers, border patrol. I call this the no hard approach because it's a blanket approach that glosses over the fact that we're dealing with individual people here, each with a particular story and reason for fleeing their home country. The other view is amnesty. We should give legal status to everyone. No need for borders. Everyone come right on in. I call this the no-head approach, because it does not consider that we do live in an age of terrorism, and the United States is often a target. But is there a third view, one that combines both head and heart? My view on immigration tries to do just that. It rests on three principles, all of which I learned here at Calvert Hall when I was a student here about 15 years ago. The first comes from theology, that each of us is made in God's image and likeness. What does this mean? I think it means that we each have value and should be treated with respect. I just heard this a few minutes ago during the prayer service when everyone says, live Jesus in our hearts forever. If Jesus is living in our hearts, then we have value. So when I look at immigration policy, the first question I ask myself are, do our policies as a nation treat immigrants with value and respect? When I read in the newspapers, for example, that young children are being separated from their mothers at the border, when I receive phone calls from my clients that ICE agents are raiding their neighborhood, a Latino neighborhood, and arresting otherwise hardworking and peaceful people, or when children come to my office teary-eyed asking why their father was deported back to El Salvador, I can't help but ask myself, are these policies treating immigrants with value and respect? The second principle I have comes from political philosophy, and that is that a sovereign nation has a duty to protect its citizens. This is nothing new, of course. It goes back to ancient Greece and Plato's Republic. Even in your own house, I can imagine your parents lock the doors at night to protect you from others coming in to harm you or your family. There is nothing unreasonable about that. So borders, walls, laws regulating who comes into our country, all make perfect, reasonable sense. My third principle comes from Catholic social teaching. The Catechism of the Catholic Church provides that the more prosperous nations are obliged, to the extent that they are able, to welcome the foreigner in search of the security and the means of livelihood which he or she cannot find in their country of origin. So as Catholics, it is our duty as a prosperous nation, such as the United States, to welcome the foreigner, those women and children from El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala, who are fleeing, their, fleeing violence and poverty in their home countries. I dedicate most of my waking hours to this issue because I feel it is the civil rights issue of our generation. 
And each of us here today has a chance to be on the right or the wrong side of this history. The main problem we face today is that our laws that allow for legal immigration are very, very narrowly tailored, complex to navigate without attorneys, and downright expensive. Unless you have a family member who's a U.S. citizen or a U.S. employer sponsoring you, you generally have no way to come here legally. Even a case like asylum is becoming increasingly difficult to obtain as our laws, our immigration courts, and our judges are making it harder and harder to win cases. And there's simply no avenue for that woman from Guatemala, that single mother, who only wants to live in a country where she has food, shelter, and a chance to live comfortably. My challenge to each of you here today is to be an advocate for broad immigration policies that welcome more people to our soil in a humane, sensible manner that recognizes their dignity and also protects our national security. And we should forget that nearly all of us here today are immigrants, and those at the border today are no different than your own relatives who ventured here from other countries many centuries ago. If I may just close with a story. A few months ago, I was in Managua, that's the capital of Nicaragua, and when I arrived at passport control, the officer asked me where I was from. I said I'm from the United States. I'm an American. He put down my passport and smiled at me and said, you know what? I'm an American too. While initially confused, the more I thought about it, the more sense it made. America is a continent, and each of us born on the continent of America is an American. It's not just exclusive to those born here in the United States. And I say this because the larger problem of immigration is a struggle we have as a country to come together and not to further divide ourselves as a people. We have to, in some way, deal with the fact that we're all here, no one's going to leave, and we might as well make the most of it, with respect, and we might get somewhere. God bless each of you, and God bless Calvary.